three in the fourth. One on for Moises Alou, and Alou with a double off Tommy Green. Mike Lansing comes in to score. Green giving up four runs in four innings. But the Phils tie the game in the seventh, and Kevin Stocker snapping an 0 for 14 slump. Drives in West Chamberlain. He also had two hits, Chamberlain did. Phils were up by one, and then Dave Hollins puts the game away for the Phillies with his 13th home run of the year. Phillies win it 7-4, but Stocker, the hero, despite his two errors as he drove in the game-winning run, it's easy to see why the Spos were swept. The two players that carry them, Marquise Grissom and Larry Walker, two for 22 in the series. The Cards looking to keep close in Pittsburgh. Joe Torre perhaps thinking of taking them out himself. Top of the fourth, Pirates up 2-1. Red hot Brian Jordan put the, the cards corner, ahead with this blast. His two-run home run, here, his ninth the of the year, cards lead by one. In Tied in the 11th, Carlos yeah, Garcia, the line drive. What's with Mark Whitten? Well, he said he lost it in the lights. Garcia motoring around to third. Comes through with a one-out triple. Garcia four for six. After two intentional walks to load the bases, Jeff King finishes the job. Driving in Garcia with a game-winning run, and the Pirates win 5-4. The second straight ninth, who didn't make it past the sixth for just the second time this season. Dave Justice with something to do with that. Met fans, most of them, actually read papers during Met games, and you know why. Braves lead 4-0. Met's defense, no help to Gooden. Damon Berryhill's grounder goes right through the statue of Eddie Murray at first. Two errors for the Mets. More Braves power. Top of the seventh, Ron Gant had to keep up with his teammate Justice. Both now have 28 home runs. Braves win easily. The Braves, who now have lost just three of their last 17 road games, move on to Cincinnati. The Mets end up getting swept for the 10th time this season. And you thought we gave up counting. Provided by him, help it. Getting the dribbler by Andre Dawson and getting the hawk by a step. Perez retired the first seven batters he faced, including Mo Vaughn with a fork ball. Scoreless in the third for Boston, Aaron Seeley in trouble. Two on, none out. Deion James struggling a single to right. That scores Pat Kelly. Yanks up, one nothing. Two batters later, same score. Two on for the Yanks. Seeley, the breaking stuff all over Danny Tartable. Then two outs in the sacks full. You continue to get the glimpse and get a reason of why Seeley is so good. Turning up the heat on Bernie Williams. No complaints by Buck. And then Scott's Cooper with a shot. Mike Gallego takes care of and gets Cooper at first. Yanks were up two zip. Perez had a no hitter into the six. He struck out seven, including Scott Fletcher looking. But Billy Hatcher broke up his no hitter in that sixth inning. To the ninth, Yanks up by two. Paul O'Neill with a single. Wade Boggs comes in to score the Yanks. Go on to win it and make Butch Hobson a loser. 4-1, the final Don Mattingly also had an RBI single. These two will meet again September 17th in the Bronx. The As we head towards September, a Kirby Puckett turned that around. A shot to left homer, 13 of the year for Puckett, 2 nothing Twins. That type of day for Mars. Watch this scary moment in the middle innings. Mike Pagliarulo. The line drive, good self-defense by Jack. He knocked it down, he picked it up, he should have ate it. He threw it, he threw it away. Pags would get to third, later score. The Twins would take a 5-1 lead. Morris would get the hook in the fourth after allowing five runs. He said he felt like a minor league kid. He couldn't find the plate. Kirby found the baseball and found Al Leiter on the giving end of his second homer of the day. That's a third decker for Kirby. Pat Gillick, can you get some pitching help? You might need some. Maybe it's a sign of pitching desperation. The Jays signed vets Randy St. Clair and Matt Young. Assign them to AAA Syracuse. Minnesota wins this one by seven to seven. McDonald. Sean Bergman started this game. He was sent down to the minors by the end of the day. Harold Reynolds a hit. Eight six Tigers. We're in the sixth. Mike Devereaux to left into the Michigan afternoon into the bleachers. We're outside at a pair of crazy eights in a wild high scoring series. But bases loaded. No, not Dan Gladden who had slams on Tuesday and Wednesday, but Chad Kruder does the slam. Third Tiger Grand Slam in as many days. Ties a major league record. Milwaukee set it in 78. What is that, a phone number? 1711, starting four with the feisty well, here, team Kansas from Texas. Uh, from Kansas City, I should say. Here's Hal McCray. He told his team, this isn't that important a series. Don't worry about it. Well, the importance was shown early by Tim Raines. Home run. Fourth to start a game this year. Career hit 2,000. Socks up 1-0. Top of the second. Jack McDowell getting some good help. A 5-4-3 double play that nearly became a triple play, but Wally Joyner beat the throw at home. Game tied at 1. Kevin Apier was helped by some outstanding defense by Chico Lean. Infield in, throw coming home, and Ellis Burks is easily 
out at the plate. If you're getting more support with Burks at bat, a shot to left field that would have been at least an extra base hit, but Kevin McReynolds, solid defensive player with a good catch, more good defense. Chico, again, is the man starting a four, six, three, and Apier throws his fourth complete game of the season as Kansas City wins round one of this battle atop the West. 4-2, Apier outpitches the AL win leader Jack McDowell. The White Sox leadoff man got a hit in six innings. They only scored two runs in this game. Rafael Palmero, who hasn't had a great homestand, but he closes it out in grand fashion. Career best, 30 homers for Palmero. Texas up 2-0. Dean Palmer hadn't homered since the All-Star break. Change that. First homer in 25 games, 22nd of the year. Farrell's given up 17 in limited innings. 4-1 Texas in the sixth. Rene Gonzalez thought he was hit by the pitch by Kenny Rogers. Rich Garcia says, you were not. Come back here. Buck Rogers was upset. So Gonzalez's at-bat continues. A second chance becomes his third hit of the game. Tim Salmon scored 4-2 Texas. Next hitter, Gary DeSarcina. Fly ball to right. Dan Peltier, the catch. Eduardo Perez coming from home. Good throw by Peltier. His foot actually did beat the tag. He was safe, but he was called out. And Texas goes on to win 4-2. Kenny Rogers, six innings, six hits, six strikeouts. Tom Henke has retired the last 17 hitters he's faced. Rockies top of four, runner on second. Joe Girardi back up the middle. Gerald Clark would score from second. And the Rockies with the 2-0 lead. Now in the fifth, Astros cut it to 2-1. And Craig Biggio facing Mo Sanford with one on. Hey, Mo. That's out of there for a two-run blast. His 14th 3-2 Astros. In the ninth, 3-2 still. Runners on the corners. Doug Jones is on facing Charlie Hayes. And Charlie Hayes hurts him. That is a three-run blast. And that would be a Colorado winner. Would-be closer Doug Jones falling to three and nine, giving up the big Charlie Hayes blast. And Colorado with a club record six-game win streak intact. All this and Fred Pickman, too. It's, it's just almost too much. <laughs> Earlier, the Giants at Wrigley. And Trevor Wilson, his first appearance since going on the DL on July 2nd with a tender shoulder for the Giants. He allowed two hits through six innings. Got Jose Vizcaino there to end the third, one of five Ks. Now Kurt Manwaring. Breaking a 1-1 tie in the fifth off Greg Hibbert, 2-1 Giants, and Will Clark with some pain. Fouling that one off his right knee in the eighth, was forced to leave the game. Said afterward he had no idea if he would miss any playing time because of the injury. Third time he's done it in two years. The good news is the Giants win 4-1, and Wilson giving the Giants a boost. Rod Beck not Face in Cincinnati, Andre Agassi without the camera. And he could have taken pictures of home runs that he had at David Justice, the two-run shot off Tim Pugh, number 100 in Justice's career. Third inning, Fred McGriff. Uh, this one is still going. Crosses a couple of zip codes as it lands way out there. A three-run shot, number 26 for the crime dog. And Deion Sanders rips one off the fair pole. What's in a name, Tim Pugh? 10-0 Atlanta when Ron Gant hits his 29th of the year. A two-run shot to make it 12-0 Braves as they just beat up the Reds. 14-0, the final Steve Avery and three relievers combined on a one-hitter, the first for the Braves since Phil Necro turned the trick in 1976. The Braves stayed eight and a half back while the Reds have lost four in a row. The Mets in Philadelphia with a 5-4 lead, bottom of the ninth, two out, two on. Jim Eisenreich hits what should be a game, ending grounder to short, but Kevin Baez throws like Joan Baez, and John Croc scores the tying run, 5-5. Now bases loaded, still bottom nine, and look what happens to Anthony Young on that. Kim Batiste, the grand slam to end it. Anthony Young deserved a lot better once again, but instead the Phillies win 9-5 in a game that was so much closer than that. If it weren't for bad luck, it seems Anthony Young wouldn't have had any at all this year. Philly newcomer Bobby Thigpen got the win with one. Andy Tomberlin, 5-1 Pittsburgh, bottom of the fifth, bases loaded. The base hit to right field, a two-run single, and Tomberlin's first major league hit, a memory for him. 7-1 Pirates at that point, and the Marlins only highlights on defense. Jeff Conine, wow, climbing the wall and making the catch. Then out in center field, Chuck Carr, a wow, rug burn, and ow, ow, ow. <laughs> As the Pirates hang on, win the game. 8-3 the final. The Pirates' Zane Smith, he won his third consecutive start. As 24. We'll get to more on that in a minute, but it's Danny Darwin who had his number early, even though Ricky didn't like the call at all. 1-0 Red Sox, bottom of the third, runners at the corners and two out when Scott Cooper bangs one off the lower part of the monster. 
Sox scored three in the inning and took a 4 nothing lead, two on the Cooper double. 4-1 Sox, top of the fourth. Tony Fernandez lines to third. Scott Cooper doubling off Joe Carter. The double dip ends the inning and the Toronto threat. 5-1 Red Sox, top of the sixth. And it's Paul Muller hitting one to center field. Devon White, the one wanting to tag and score from third. But watch what happens with the ball. Roberto Alomar caught at third. Nice diving tag by Cooper. And the Red Sox win a big one. 5-3 the final. The Sox snapped a five-game losing streak against the Jays and pulled back within one of Toronto. And Ricky Henderson's number 24 in the Bronx and the Yankees took advantage. It was scoreless in the seventh when Mike Stanley unloads to left center field off Jamie Moyer. That brings in Don Mattingly and Danny Tartable and a 2-0 Yankee lead. Stanley was in an August RBI drought but broke out tonight with the first two runs of the ball game. That was enough offense behind Jim Abbott so some defense was also in order. Like Wade Boggs with the leap at third. And then Boggsy again this time into the dirt and almost starting a Yankee double play. New York, 4-1. to And the story, Jim Abbott, who allowed eight hits and only a ninth inning sack fly spoiled his shutout bid. The Yanks' third straight win, the Milwaukee rookie Angel Miranda shutting down the Tigers on a six-hitter, his second. In Chicago, started the night just two and a half behind the first place White Sox, and this is Jose Lean. Up the middle to Craig Graybeck, the one robbing him and getting the force at second. Tied 2-2, two, two, two outs top of the sixth, when Mike McFarland takes Jason Bure out of the ballpark. The fan almost caught it in his hat, but Ellis Burks watched him drop it. It's a 3-2 Royal lead. Bottom of the seventh, Kevin McReynolds, nice catch. Brian McRae out in center field. This, a nice catch as well. 4-3 Royals to the bottom of the eighth. When Frank Thomas puts the big hurt on Jeff Montgomery. He came in to save it, but he watches it disappear out into the crowd. The two-run shot put the White Sox up 5-4, and that's the way it would finish up. Thomas's 30th home run of the season. The White Sox now three and a half ahead of Kansas City. The eighth, Paul Sorrento had homered earlier, but he unties it with a base hit here. Albert Bell comes around to score. Cleveland up 4-3. They tack on a couple of more, and then Jeremy Hernandez would close it out. A face first, covering first base. But all he had to do is touch it, and he did. And the Indians win it 6-3. The Rangers' Rafael Palmero. He went 0 for 2, was hit by a pitch and walked, but his 30-game road hitting streak was snapped. The Rangers stayed three behind.